In this lecture, we're going to focus on data management. Data management is an important phase of the HR Analytics project lifecycle. After you've formulated your question, you've acquired your data, you're ready to start managing your data. So what is data management? Well, data management refers to the process of wrangling, cleaning, manipulating, and or applying structure to the data that you're working with. Now, some of you might have heard of what's called the 80-20 rule. And the idea is this. When you're managing data and analyzing data, about 80% of your time is going to be spent on the data management side of things, and only about 20% of the time is going to be spent on data analysis. And the reason I mention this is that it's important to remember this 80-20 rule because you need to plan for this in terms of resources and time and budget as well, in terms of how much is going to be needed to actually manage and wrangle and clean the data once you've acquired it. it depends on your perspective. Some people love the management side. I tend to prefer the analysis side because that's when you actually are able to test those questions and hypotheses you've generated during the question formulation phase. However, that's usually only about a fifth of your time will be spent on actual data analysis. Now, the 80-20 rule is the common way of phrasing this, but I'd actually say in many cases it's more like the 95-5 rule, where you're going to spend 95% of your time on data management and only about 5% of your time on data analysis. Especially when the data need structure, maybe they've come into you in a relatively raw and unstructured format, and then you need to wrangle them into a shape or manipulate them in some way to actually have a structure so that you can use simple analysis even, uh, let alone even more complex analyses. Now, there's different types of tools and systems and platforms we can use in data management. Your HR information system is one of them, or your enterprise resource planning flat platform, or any type of database management system or information system. In addition, we can use data analytics specific software programs like R, or even Python too for that matter, as well as other programs that you might have used before. Some people even use Excel, SPSS, SAS, Data, and so forth. But R tends to be one of the more powerful data analysis or data anal analytics specific software programs when it comes to um, data analysis as well as some degree of data management. In fact, there's even some packages out now too, uh, one of which is available through the Tidyverse of packages, which was created by some of the developers behind the R Studio platform. And those are called dplyr, reader, as well as some other functions that are really, really helpful for managing your data. In fact, the dplyr package is really, really nice for trying to simulate some of the processes and some of the functions that you would find in SQL, or SQL as it's also known. Now, in terms of data management, what does managing data even mean? Well, this can mean identifying data needed to create information necessary to make HR decisions. It could be defining characteristics of those data, such as whether they're quantitative or qualitative in nature for each particular variable or field, or if they're, in other words, if they're numeric or string. In addition, it might be organizing those data in a manner that actually promotes integration across different data tables, databases, and so forth, as well as ensuring the data integrity and quality and accessibility for different people that might be working on them. And this can become particularly important when working with longitudinal data, that is repeated measures of data over time for the same entities, or in our case, we're often talking about people or human beings within the organization. Now, in addition, data management can also mean restricting access to data to only to those proper personnel or those people that have the right security restrictions or permissions to actually access certain types of data within our system to even manage it in the first place. In addition, managing data can mean manipulating and joining or merging data, uh, data tables, data frames, and so on. And it also means adding structure if needed as well. And then as kind of an overarching aspect of data management, data security and privacy should really be at the front of our minds when we're working and managing data. Because this is also an opportunity for data to kind of leak out. We should make sure that we're not just sending data sets through email, especially if they have any kind of identifying e information in them. We should be take careful steps to encrypt our data and so forth. Again, if it has that identifiable information linked to it, and even if it doesn't too, because it can contain some proprietary information about the company. So let's focus on an important step within the data management phase or process, and this is the idea of data cleaning. And so sometimes you'll hear this referred to as data cleansing as well. And this is where you ensure that the data fields or variables are clearly and consistently defined and are high in integrity. And so here I've actually provided an example of a very, very simple data table in which we can illustrate some very simple data cleaning concepts. 
So here you see we have an employee ID variable. This is our unique identifier. You can imagine this being a key variable to link this table to other tables as part of a relational database. In addition, we have our field or variable that's facility. So this is the facility where each employee, which is represented as a row, currently works in, let's say. And so here we have represented Beaverton and Portland. And so more on that in just a second. And then third, we have our field or variable, which is the start date for the employees. And we'll talk about that in a moment as well. So let's back up to this idea of this facility variable, just to use this as an example, as things that we commonly come across when we're cleaning data, especially when we haven't put in data validation procedures ahead of time. Again, Beaverton and Portland pop up here, but there's a few things you should notice here. And that is that across the four different mentions of Beaverton, there's actually three different forms. And so the first two, if you look at the first two rows there, you'll see Beaverton with a capital B in the first row. In the second row, you see Beaverton spelled the same way, but with a lowercase b. Now, some of our platforms have case sensitivity where they would actually treat these two levels of this field or variable as distinct from one another. In other words, Beaverton with a capital B would not be seen as the same as Beaverton with a capital or with a lowercase b. Now, if you look at the very, uh, towards the bottom in that second to last row, you'll actually see a misspelling here where presumably they're referring to the, the town or city of Beaverton, but we're missing the A in it, plus the B is lowercase. And so anytime that you enter data like this, our systems typically aren't smart enough, and they are getting smarter at dealing with things like this, but if you were to run accounts or frequencies, how many times did these each appear, you would actually get four different unique values here. You would get Beaverton with a capital B, Beaverton with a lowercase b, and Beaverton that's misspelled, as well as Portland. Okay? When in reality, we're probably only interested in understanding two different facilities, Beaverton and Portland. So this is where you need to do some data correction and cleaning. Also notice that there's two missing values here too. So this is an important part of cleaning too. Maybe you can recover this information. Maybe someone just did not update this particular field for certain employees in the company when it came to what facility they're currently working in. Or maybe there's some other explanation for why these data are missing. But that's an important thing to consider too. Okay, so now let's move over to the start date variable or field. And so here these are, you can see different dates. Fortunately, they're all in the same format, which is a great starting point. This is not always the case with da different um, dates, especially if we've been merging or joining data files, especially vertical joins between different data files, perhaps, or data tables from different company or different locations, uh, different facilities even, or different geographic locations internationally as well. So when we look at this, Everything seems good, right? Well, except for the question, what does start date mean here? How have we defined this in our system? And this is where you might want to look and see what kind of documentation do you have on this, because start date might mean different things depending on who's entering the data. Perhaps start date really just means when someone started in the company for the first time or most recently. Okay, So when they were onboarded into the company their first day of work. Alternatively, Perhaps some of these are actually referencing someone's promotion, their most pr recent promotion within the company. So when did they start that new position? So this is something that you really want to make sure that you're actually comparing apples to apples as opposed to apples and oranges. And so this can be a really long process and challenging process if you haven't carefully documented this. So make sure that you've defined your variables and fields consistently ahead of time is the best practice. If not, you're going to have a lot of data cleaning to do and a lot of data interpretation too and troubleshooting on the back end. Okay, so now let's move on to another important part of data management, which is data manipulation. So sometimes our data are going to need to be manipulated into a particular structure or format so that we can even analyze or visualize them in the first place. So commonly, if we're working with data, we're often working with it in what's called a wide format. Okay, so let's use the example of, let's assume this very brief data table here with three different variables or fields is representing the pretest scores and the post-test scores before and after training for these three employees here. And so the way the data are represented is we have our column where we have employee IDs. These are unique identifiers for each employee. Each row represents a unique employee. And then for each employee, they have a pretest score, which is in that middle column, and then they have a post-test score. So for example, for the first employee, which is EP1619, in terms of their employee ID number, we can see that their pretest score before training was 55, and their post-test score was 60. So we can see they increased by five points. And so is that a meaningful difference? Well, we'd have to look further into that. But for now, 
how else could we display these data? And in some cases, if we're particularly trying to do types of analyses that involve repeated measurements, such as a paired samples t-test, or if you have more data available to you as well, perhaps a repeated measures ANOVA or something like that, well, then we might have to manipulate the data into what we often call a long format. Sometimes this is called the stacked format. And so here, in this case, we still have, the th we still have three columns, but they're defined a little bit differently here, and they're actually different variables. And so we still have that employee ID variable column, but what you'll notice here is that we have now two entries for each employee. So why is that? Well, the answer comes by looking in the next two columns. And so with the next two variables or columns, we see test time and score. And so now we've introduced a categorical variable here in which we see that there are two different levels for the test time variable, a pretest and a post-test. And then if we look over to the third column or variable, we see there is now a, it's something called score. And so we can see for this first employee, employee EP1619, we have their pretest and post-test score, and they go from a 55 before training to a 60 after training. And you can see if you glance over at the wide format how that was translated. And the reason, again, that we might manipulate the data, we're essentially saying the same thing here, but analytically and how we work with it as well as how we generate data visualizations, this can actually enable us to do different types of things, at least more readily and easily with certain types of analyses. Now there's other, many other reasons why we might shift from a wide to a long format or back again. It really depends on the type of modeling or visualization that we're planning to do with the data. So lastly, let's talk about data structure. Okay? So often an important part of data management is understanding the structure of the data and creating structure out of the data, especially when you need to move from an unstructured format to a structured format. Now this can be quite challenging, but this is also something that we face a lot when we're working with big data, which can be defined as being not just massive in size, but being largely unstructured in many cases as well. So structured data often come in the form of a table or a matrix, where you have those defined rows and columns. Unstructured data, on the other hand, often come in their natural raw format. So there's some advantages, especially from a storage perspective, um, when it comes, especially if you're working with a data lake, to keeping the data in that raw, unstructured format. So let's use an example or look at an example of unstructured data. So imagine that you're doing a project where you're trying to understand um, email content. Maybe you're going to use these emails too to um, understand and develop a social network of who's emailing who within the company to understand some of these informal ties or even formal ties that people are using and how frequently are they contacting one another through email. So here we have four different emails and these emails are essentially a, a, just the, the raw data where you have who is the data from or who is the email from, when was it sent, who is it sent to, what's the subject line, what's the body of the email and there's even the signature line there. Well, this is very unstructured or raw in nature. So you can imagine just be sa saving a lot of these different emails just in their raw form within our database. Now, if we want to apply structure to this, maybe we scrape the data from those emails. Well, then we're going to need to manipulate them and create some kind of structure if we want to do certain types of analyses with them. So here we've applied structure to those same emails. So here we have four different variables or fields and then four different rows associated with these. So let's look at that first variable or field. This is email. So this is just where it's designated. Are we talking about email one, two, three, or four? So you can remember back here, we had four different emails, email one through four. The second field or variable is the sender's name. The third is the receiver's name. And then just for the sake of simplicity here, I just included the subject line here. Okay, so what is the subject line of the email? And so perhaps, again, we're just interested in creating a social network. And so maybe all we need is just the sender and the receiver, and then maybe also the date too might be another field of variable, so then we can tell how many times people were um, contacting each other and sending emails back and forth within a certain date range. So this, again, is a way to illustrate what structure means when it comes to data. This is putting it into a format that can be more readily analyzed and interpreted. So just to sum up, we've been framing data management as part of the HR Analytics project lifecycle. It's really the third phase after question formulation, and then comes data acquisition, and then, then we get to data management. Now, assuming we've done a really good job with data management, and remember this usually takes up the bulk of our time and resources before we even get to do the exciting part, which is data analysis. 
So this wraps up the lecture on data management. Thank you very much.